conversation overheard at the Knightsbridge exhibition of fur-bearing animals. To think that my lovely fur coat came from a little skunk. Really, I didn't even know you were married. Now let's see where the fur coats go to. Even at 25,000 pounds a time, you must admit they look worth it. The winter bride has a gown of ermine. You get so chilly driving round the park. Chinchilla, mink, white fox on velvet. There's no excuse now for feeling cold. Thirty-three years ago, a princess from Britain sailed up the Oslo Fjord to make her home in Norway, bride of Prince Christian. On this day of storm and sleet, Queen Maud returned to Norway for the last time. When the Queen was brought back to her last resting place, 80,000 people waited in the cheerless weather to receive the Queen whom they had taken to their hearts. Her husband, King Haakon, and her son, Crown Prince Olaf, followed as mourners. Sussex. Government British News was the only newsreel to draw attention to the case of 11 pedigree dogs sentenced to death for sheep worrying. Now on appeal, their owner, Miss Slattery, has obtained a reprieve and they will not be destroyed. The appeal was against the slaughter of 11 dogs for an offence which probably had been committed by only one of them. Prague. The storm centre of Europe has chosen a new president in place of Dr. Ben Esch, who resigned. He is Dr. Emil Hasher, and his appointment seems to be welcomed by all concerned. We wish him luck in his unenviable office. America. In a few months' time, the World's Fair will be opening in New York. And so the building of these very modern designs for pavilions and amusement centers is making steady progress. The work is far ahead of schedule. A world of tomorrow takes its shape today. Portsmouth. One of the 16 destroyers of the tribal class is called HMS Gurkha. And a presentation of trophies was made by Major General C.H. Powell on behalf of the 20 battalions of the Gurkha Brigade. Major General Powell is senior colonel of the brigade. Kansas City. Loaded cans of petrol exploded and a roofing company's premises were completely demolished in this oil blaze of the downtown area. Streams of liquid fire set light to everything in the neighborhood. Firefighters had the fight of their lives. The climax came when the roofing company's roof fell in. London. Marylebone Town Hall was the scene of the wedding of George Roby and Miss Blanche Littler. They were surrounded by air raid precaution placards. Goodness knows why. Before descending the steps, Mr. Roby stopped and he looked and he listened to the click of cameras and the cheers of the famous and the obscure. This was one day when the Prime Minister of Mirth wore a Prime Minister sort of suit. There were more than mere football drills in store for Arsenal when they went to play the famous racing club in Paris. Foggers held up their plane at Croydon, and landing at Le Bourget, they say they nearly hit a hangar. But here they are in the field in their familiar colours, racing clubber in hoops, but beneath the familiar white and red shirts of the Highbury men, there is an aching void. They had breakfast at half past six in the morning and had no time for another meal before the match. Racing club were the first to score from a corner. That made Arsenal one down, although they were not downhearted and least of all down in the mouth. They kept on trying to feed that wide open goal mouth, but nothing happened till the game was nearly over. Then Drury ran through and equalized. Garçon, bring the menu. The Christmas mails have started leaving in lovely Christmas weather. Already the great-hearted British public has begun to send gifts to friends and relatives abroad. A shaving brush to Freddie in Borneo and a box of cigars to Uncle Henry in Havana. As there's going to be no increase in income tax, you can spend lavishly. Of course, there might be an increase, but if there is, you might as well go broke now as later. And, of course, in London, there's the pavement store. In Hoban, there is always an exciting display of toys on the curb. Now then, pop it down. Where you like, ladies. That's a lovely little gun here. All the way from mortar shot. A real right cracker. Look at it, eh? All the right toys here we've got this time. There's a lovely violin. Here, off a crown. I'll tell it to you for a shilling. Here you are. I'll give you tuppence. What do you say about that? I'll ring up my solicitors. Paris is much more posh. The big stores have had their displays in the windows, and as usual, they go in for moving figures in a grand way. Everything made to work, with an orchestra guaranteed to make Aunt Fifi's headache.
know, it's a peculiar thing about these faces. They do remind you of relations. Now, America. Thanksgiving is the real turkey festival in the States, but there's enough left over for Christmas. And Christmas is not far off. Can you wonder? They look worried. But they say, let's eat and drink even if we can't be merry. And the dog says, boys, the drinks are on me. Alas, poor Rudolph. He ate too much and got a nightmare. And here's a story for those who don't believe there is a Santa Claus. Of course there is. Apart from anything else, there's a place in Indiana which sends out letters with Santa Claus on the date stamp. Do you want any more proof than that? <laughs> Needless to say, Santa Claus himself is the postmaster, and he knows that the old songs are best. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride the one horse open sleigh. <laughs> That's all right. This is the Gaumont British News, presenting the world to the world. Forest fire came creeping over the mountains in California, along the famous Santa Monica Range and bearing down upon Los Angeles. Charred hills and a blackened countryside lay in the path of the angry flames which were driven forward by a 60 mile an hour gale. 4,000 firefighters worked to stem the oncoming tide as it advanced on the homes of film stars in Malibu and Santa Monica. Hundreds of other homes were wiped out, millions of dollars worth of damage done. The blaze that swept over 10,000 acres was said to have been started by a man in Topanga Canyon. From his cabin fire, he emptied red-hot coals upon the brushwood, and the flames ran amok. The LNER steamer Prague brought to Britain 200 Jewish children, refugees from Germany. They came from middle-class homes in Berlin, Leipzig, Breslau and Hamburg. The youngest among them were five years old, the eldest 17, and they are to be trained for useful service in Britain. Until suitable homes can be found for them, they are being cared for in the holiday camp at Dovercourt. Many of these children are orphans. Others have parents who are in concentration camps in Germany. Britain is ever ready to hold out a helping hand to the oppressed and suffering. But it is incredible in this 20th century that it should be necessary. China. Every mail from the Far East brings a story of bombardment and terror. The latest is the wreck of the Kiang Sin in which many lives were lost. This mail brings also pictures of HMS Sandpiper. British naval boat that was struck by bomb splinters in the troubled waters of China. <laughs> 